What's going on, beautiful people? I've decided to build myself a very strange computer, and I thought, why not get one of these that Craft Computing reviewed about three weeks ago? It's an I ring, and what makes it so weird is under that cheap Intel heatsink that I added there is a laptop 11th gen i7 processor that's soldered to an MATX motherboard. Also, what you'll notice is that I have an I-Ring NVMe drive and some quite handsome I-Ring RAM. Why did I go with that NVMe drive and that RAM? Well, I-Ring had a store. I was on AliExpress. Everything was fairly cheap. I thought, let's knock this in the head and get all the parts we needed. Also, I got an SFX power supply because my little project is going to be kind of space constrained. But the SFX power supply I got, which was admittedly pretty janky, didn't end up working. I think it requires 220 volts. Let's start the little build vlog and you'll see how it kind of went. Okay, so maybe you would consider this the star of the show. I don't know. Craft Computing already did a video about it, so... Um, he was very impressed with the board. I'm not sure if I got the i9 variant. I think I got the i7 variant. I don't know. And the way this thing is labeled, who knows. Let's go ahead and get him out of his box. I will say all of this was shipped, just wrapped up in a bunch of bubble wrap and shipping tape, but I was pretty impressed with it. Let's crack him out of here and see what we got. This motherboard feels pretty substantial. I'm assuming it's because they've put this crazy heat shield on here. It's pretty neat <laughs> because, you know, a laptop chip normally doesn't have anything like that. So here we go. And there's your big uh, crazy heat shield. Well, it's glaring on the camera, so that's not great, but that's okay. You guys get the idea, so there we go, we've got that. The white heat spreaders on this RAM is pretty handsome. Pretty handsome indeed. So, okay, and line our little notch up here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. The heat spreaders are either the thinnest metal that I've ever felt or they're plastic. So, I don't know. I don't think it makes much of a difference regardless. There we go. Uh, what kind of video output do we got on this bad boy? All right, we've got some, a display port and two HDMIs. Okay, so there is your cadre of inputs. We have sound, we have four USB 3 ports, it looks like two USB 2 ports, and probably gigabit networking, so that's pretty cool. Uh, there's not a CR2032 battery in this, but thankfully, through the magic of Amazon, I've got a whole sack load of those, so let's chuck one of those in there right quick. <laughs> that wasn't very tight to get in there, but hopefully the good folks in... Uh, China that designed this Frankenstein monster will have that uh, lined out for us. All right, y'all ready for this? The perfect amount of thermal paste. God, that's a horrible, horrible uh, application. Now the thing about this particular cooler that worries me, this exact one, is the fact that this pin is all chewed up because it was it's always been really hard to get loose. So we'll see how it goes locking around.
there we go so we finally got it to boot uh, obviously it's not what I intended because there is the shamed little tiny power supply I don't know if it's a broken unit or it really is a 220 volt input and it just didn't know what to do but uh, you know that's just the case a lot of times whenever you're dealing with this uh, weird strange you know Chinese stuff but you can see we have a UEFI prompt alright guys we're one step closer alright so we're back and continuing with this earring build we have the solid state drive look at that bad boy yeah so I'm going to install this one right here in this port here it is in all of its glory um, there's nothing on the back so 240 gigabytes and uh, a black circuit board on the back so um, I'm interested to see how this thing performs there we go let's go ahead and put this thing in there and see if this is the right length to fit voila okay so now let us put in the screw as you can see that NVMe drive is not gonna just hang out on its own wheel <laughs> so uh, trying to get out of there on us so we'll just spin him down with the teeny turner I wonder if they make an Ike nobody's gonna get that joke <clears throat> so we've got that now uh, let's plug in our fresh Windows 11 flash drive that I just made so there we go we've got that plugged in the back there now let's switch over to looking at the monitor now let's flip on the power supply touch some pins There we go. Now one thing to note, if you want to see uh, anything on the screen, like the boot logo or whatever, you need to be plugged into the first HDMI port that is next to the USB ports. Otherwise, um, you're not gonna see anything on the screen for quite some time until the UEFI shell pops up that tells you there's not an operating system installed. So now it is booting off of the um, USB drive. All right, and there's nothing incredibly interesting that you're probably going to see from this. If you're watching this video, you've probably installed uh, Windows a bunch of times. Let me try to zoom in here to help get rid of that moray pattern all right so i've got a keyboard and a mouse plugged up but i'll be doing the most of this with the keyboard because i have to bend a lot to get to the mouse so i'll just do next oh let me go plug in the ethernet which is something i forgot to do all right we certainly don't want to try to install windows 11 without some ethernet i'm just interested to see what it'll do uh, just from a bog standard installation standpoint. I do not have a license key right now. Um, so we're just going to say I don't have a product key. And it really is nice that Microsoft doesn't worry about it all that much anymore. I'm going to go with Windows 11 Pro. We'll accept the license agreement. Okay, custom install because this drive should not have anything on it. 238 and a half gigabytes, so that's fine. And I'll be able to tell real quick if we're dealing with USB 2 or USB 3 with this flash drive.
Now given my janky thermal paste installation, <laughs> I really hope that the machine isn't throttling, but we'll find out whenever we can get into Windows and test some stuff out. There we go. Zoom that in a little bit. And that was pretty quick. Had to be USB 3 for the drive. So let's see what she does now. The stock BIOS is supposed to be set to go ahead and boot from the NVMe device if there's something bootable on it. So we'll see if it decided to behave itself. Oh yeah. I can tell you right now it picked up the NVMe because that USB boot wasn't nearly as fast. And now we have this lovely I-Ring um, boot logo coming up from the UEFI. I would be willing to bet there's some way to override that in the BIOS because this thing's BIOS has more options than anything I've ever seen. But given that it's an engineering sample and chances are the reference BIOS they were given has all the options turned on and they basically just slapped it on there and let it go. Okay, where we're going into the second boot from start. Let's see if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Apparently a pretty good thing. To be honest with you, I have not installed Windows 11 from scratch. I've upgraded a few machines from 10 to 11, but this is my first shot at a clean install of 11. So I apologize if I really don't know what to expect. I'm assuming it's almost the same routine that you would see with Windows 10. I don't remember this many reboots though. No, this is not, uh, oh wow, okay, not sure, what's going on here, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is pop out this USB drive, and we'll give it a restart. Let's do a cloud download. <laughs> I've never done this before either. So we'll go ahead and try that to re-download Windows 11 from the cloud. Clearly this should not be something that happens. So, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know if this is something to do with the motherboard, the CPU on the motherboard my janky cooler installation. Um, I don't imagine that it would be bad enough to make the thing not boot. So let's just do this reset and see what happens. This will probably take a bit of downloading, so I've never seen this, so let's see what it does. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. I'll fire it back up if something interesting happens. Jeez, pretty cool. Oh, so as
as is often the case with me, especially with strange hardware, it did not work out of the box. So I reinstalled Windows 11 using the cloud download. It would get a little farther, but it would always start doing a boot loop and sometimes it would throw a blue screen that said K mode exception not handled. I looked it up and it, that can be caused by all kinds of different failed hardware. Since there's so many variables to go through with K mode exception not handled, I started with the one that seemed to come up most often on Google and that is bad RAM. So I swapped it out for some known good RAM. Everything seemed fine, but it would still freak out if it managed to boot into the out of box experience, it would keep throwing that error. Sometimes it would just reboot with no blue screen and uh, sometimes it would just go into a boot loop wanting me to repair windows and it did that repeatedly. So I knew it wasn't the RAM or I was pretty sure it wasn't the RAM anyway. So I thought, okay, this janky NVMe drive is maybe the culprit. I swapped it out for a real fancy NVMe drive with RGB on it that I got years ago for another janky project I worked on. Um, and honestly, that NVMe drive has worked in everything I've put it in just for messing around purposes. So I did it for this board, same thing. So nothing changed. And then I thought, well, okay, uh, when I put the thermal paste on, you saw that it really wasn't that much because there really wasn't a whole lot in the tube. And I thought, well, let's pop off that janky Intel heatsink and make sure that's on there good. It was just a tad bit uh, drier than I would have liked, but honestly, um, you know, it probably wouldn't have made a difference, but at this point, you know how it is. I was just kind of desperate. So I swapped it out for some Arctic MX-5 that I had, and uh, I've used Arctic for years. Does a great job of keeping the temperatures low and whatnot. Uh, that didn't fix anything. Finally, after about five hours of screwing around, trying to install Windows a bunch of different ways, this is what actually fixed it. And here's what we ended up looking like. After many, many hours of head scratching, I finally got her working just fine. And basically what it ended up being was that the integrated graphics that are on this engineering sample of the soldered chip um, don't seem to work too well with Windows 10 or Windows 11 because I tried both. And finally, I took a GTX 1060 and uh, plugged it in here and everything is fine. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the day, it was just the fact that the integrated graphics that's on this laptop chip um, just don't work correctly. I don't know if it's because these are engineering samples and you know engineering samples are usually pre-production and can be a little janky. I don't know if it's just a driver problem, but on the website for the listing, it says that the onboard graphics will not work with legacy versions of Windows. Now, I was booting UEFI installation media. It was a UEFI installation. So Windows 11 and Windows 10 both would not work. Uh, I did notice that Craft Computing did not show using the motherboard with just the onboard graphics. So I don't know if he would have had that problem or not. He may have checked to see if the onboard graphics put out a signal and they do, because it'll boot plugged in. But if you start trying to throw windows on it, um, it will, at least my sample, wouldn't work. So at the end of the day, we have a working motherboard with a very strange processor. It has eight cores and 16 threads, by the way. It was boosting up easily to 4.1 gigahertz whenever I was just uh, playing with it a little bit in Windows 11. I didn't do a whole lot with it because I had been troubleshooting so much I was to the point where I finally said screw it. Here we are with the working system. Let's do a tally of what went right and do a tally of things that I'm going to have to do a little differently than I wanted. Number one, the motherboard and processor work fine. Number two, the NVMe works fine. Number three, I've got 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. That was fine. So that's three to the good. Now, two to the bad, I can't use the integrated graphics, which sucks because 
the thing I want to do is kind of small. And I also can't use the SFX power supply that was affordable, that cost about as much as I'm willing to spend on it. But I do have a backup ATX and it will fit. It'll just make things a little harder. So I'm not going to complain because the, the big part of this was getting the motherboard and processor working. Now, would I recommend this motherboard and processor for a mainstream system that's going to be your daily driver and you're really going to rely on it? Heck no. It's, uh, it's janky. Okay. So we've got this working platform, but what is this confined space I keep talking about? Well, here you go. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a Tandy 2500SX 25 megahertz case in all of its nasty glory. Okay, so um, I would never take a work in Tandy and strip it out to do something like this, but I got this case from my former student and good friend now, Cody, who finds this kind of stuff because he's into retro computing. I'm pretty sure it came from a school board that's within 20 or 30 miles of here, but I'm not really sure. It's really grody and nasty, but there's not a lot of corrosion or rust. So there you have it. I'm making a Tandy sleeper computer using a very strange motherboard, a very strange engineering sample processor with a smattering of AliExpress parts and some stuff I had laying around. If you like this video and want to see how it ends up, make sure to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon. That way, when I actually start laying this thing out and getting it in the case, you will be able to see that. I'll be doing some 3D printing because I'm going to need brackets and stuff. I'm going to try not to mangle the case as much as I can, but uh, really, you know, I, I'm not going to baby it too much if I need to do some surgery on it. But if you want to see all that, like I said, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. As always, thanks so much for watching my videos. I make them because it's fun, but I also think it's cool when other people think it's fun or they find some entertainment out of it. Y'all have a great day, and God bless every one of you.